I want to welcome everybody here in the sanctuary and in the cafe and online, if you're listening. Last week, my husband began this series called Be Strong. And so since he's speaking today in Oklahoma City, he asked me if I would continue on the series and add a little bit more based on what God has given me. And really, um, it's taken me 42 years to learn what I'm preaching to you today. So our first verse is in Joshua 1, 7 through 9. It says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you. I just want to praise, pray this verse over you. So let's just put our, our hands over our heart and talk to Jesus this morning. Father, we pray that we would be strong and courageous. Father, we pray that we would be so obedient to do what it is that you're telling us to do. Father, don't let us turn to the right or to the left or look to what other people are doing, but let's help us to look to you, Lord. Father, we want to be strong and courageous. We don't want to live in fear. We don't want to live in discouragement because you're with us, God. We don't have to live there. We can live in strength. So God says, be strong in your spirit. So why do we need to have a strong spirit? Like my husband shared last week, having a strong spirit, that's the power plant for our lives. And that makes a difference in every area of our life. So God told Joshua that if he obeyed, and if we obey his commandments, that we would be successful wherever we go. And wherever we, you know, in our home, in our workplace, uh, wherever we're at, we'll be strong. So today I want to drive home one point, one thought to you this morning. And that is, the weakest person in this room can choose to follow God's word and become strong. And I am the weakest person in this room. I've been weak many times, but I am choosing to be strong because God said that I can. So let me begin by telling you this story about this church um, one week, a pastor told his congregation that he needed some extra money. That sounds familiar. So he offered that whoever gave the most in the offering, that they could pick out three songs, three hymns. So after the plates were passed, um, he got so excited because he saw a $1,000 check in the offering. And he said, oh, this is great. Oh, so he said, okay, I want to know who that was that gave the $1,000. So way in the back, an elderly lady raised her hand, you know, very shyly. And she said, oh, pastor, it was me. And so he said, no, come forward, come forward. I want you to, I want to bless you this morning for giving that great offering. Come forward, come forward. So she got her cane out and she walked to the front and she got all the way to the front. And she said, he said, okay, so your reward for doing that is you get to pick out three hymns. So she got so excited, she, her eyes lit up. And she looked around, and she said, I'll take him, and him, and him. So don't tell my husband that I said that. I wasn't pointing it at anybody in particular. So it's a choice to be strong. God wants you to choose to be strong so that you can overcome all of life's issues. So our strong spirit can get us through anything. What does a person with a strong spirit look like? Well, this person has a cheerful nature. They have a joyful disposition, and their temperament is energetic, and they're bold, and they're brave, and they're courageous, and they're enthusiastic. Jesus had a strong spirit, didn't he? And he's our greatest example. In Luke 2.40, it says, And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. So Jesus was very strong, wasn't he? Even though he had so many hard things to go through, um, he, was, he chose to be strong time after time. He had to go through the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was beaten and bruised for us. But he kept strong. And also, he, he died on the cross for us, didn't he? He went through a torturous death because he loves us. And so when he died... 
He didn't stay dead, did he? He rose again, and he was strong enough to rise again for us, to give us that same resurrection power in our lives. Have you ever felt like you've been beat up by life's cares and problems? I have. Um, did you ever feel like so afraid, so much so that you wouldn't be able to like even get out of bed? You just went through a really horrendous time, and you just didn't want to get out of bed, and you felt like, man, I'm just, I'm not going to make it. You know, life has a way of beating us up, doesn't it? It has a way of really knocking the stuffing out of us. So maybe you're here this morning, but God wants you to know that even though you may be in a really rough spot, he can make you strong again. So even when you're struggling, you can be strong. Let's look at Asaph's testimony in Psalm 73:26. It says, My health may fail, and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. Isn't that awesome? So even though he, he said his health was in a terrible place, and his spirit, even his spirit was weak, that he knew that if he trusted in God, that God would be his strength. God remains the strength of my heart. He remains the strength of your heart. Even if we're sick, we can still be strong. Let's see what it says in Proverbs 18, 14. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. But a weak and broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? So what does a person who is weak in their spirit look like? Well, they have feelings of depression, and they're discouraged. They're in a bad mood a lot. They're not a happy person. Or maybe they're weak because they've had health problems and they've been sick for some time. Every day we've got prayer requests that come into the office of people that have every different kind of uh, pain and trouble. And um, isn't it awesome that we have a prayer chain that we can call and a family of God that we can come to for strength? Because we've all been there, and we all need each other during those times. So God wants you to know that he can make you strong again. Maybe you're not st- sick, but maybe there's other difficult things coming against you. Um, maybe the devil's been lying to you, and he's bombarding your mind with discouraging thoughts, and you're just filled with depression. You know what? God wants you to know this morning that he understands what you're going through, and he has answers for you this morning. He is going to touch you this morning. He is going to make you strong in your spirit. He'll make us strong in the power of his might, but we have to make a choice to be strong. So I want us to declare something this morning, and I want everybody to say it in your strongest voice. I choose to be strong. I choose to be strong. That wasn't strong. Say it stronger. I choose to be strong. Pretty, much better, much better. <laughs> so when our spirit's weak, sometimes we live with an I can't do it mentality. I used to say I can't do it a lot, and sometimes I kind of fall back on that. So just little things, you know. I can't get this key in the door. I can't do it. I can't reach this box that's tall. I can't do this. I can't do that. And that was like my go-to place. And my husband said to me, do you know you say, I can't do it a lot? And I said, no, I don't. (laughs) And he said to me, honey, you need to start saying what the word of God says. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So I, you know, practice that, practice that. And um, I want to tell you about a time where uh, Pastor David and I were so happy that we found out that I was pregnant. Not now. This was about 30 years ago. So we were really excited, and um, month after month, you know, women, we look at ourselves sideways in the mirror to see how much we're growing. And I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, there's no way, humanly possible, that my stomach can stretch out that far. It just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I thought, at eight months, I'm done. But no, it, it, it got bigger. So... Pastor David and I went to Lamaze classes, and um, the teacher was kind of like this hippie lady, you know, with long hair and, like, tie-dye shirt. And she says, now I want you to close your eyes. 
I want you to visualize that you are very strong. Yes, I'm very strong. Now, this is, what, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Okay, you're going to start feeling pain. But it's okay because you're practicing. <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah, I feel it. I feel it. I look at my husband. I'm going to be strong, right? I'm going to be strong. Honey, you're going to be strong. You could do this. And then people were telling us, you know, whatever you do, don't let them give you any medicine. You can do this naturally. And I was like, okay, you know, me and the earth were one. You know, I, I, Mother Earth, you're with me. No, I'm just kidding. And, and uh, so I said, yeah, we can do this. And they said, whatever you do, do not let them give you a C-section. Do not. You can have this baby naturally. There's no need for that. There's no need for the drugs. Yes. I can do this. I can do this. So the big day came, and we're in the car on the way to the hospital, and those pains started ripping through my body like a chainsaw. <laughs> and I looked at my husband, and I said, you get me drugs. <laughs> and he said, honey, you got it. You're, you're going to have drugs. So I said, and you tell them as soon as we get there. I'm not kidding around. <laughs> I said, you tell them I want drugs. And you tell them to give me a lot. He's like, you got it, honey. So we get to the, to the hospital, and the, and the nurse, I, you know, I said, you're going to give me drugs, lady, or somebody's going to die today. <laughs> she said, uh, we just checked you, and you're, you're like so far along, you're going to have this baby, like right away. And I believed her like an idiot. And so 12 hours later, I didn't, I didn't move. Like I didn't, you know, expand. I won't go into detail, but... Um, so then the doctor comes in and she says, uh, we're going to have to do an emergency C-section. And so I said, I don't care what you have to do. I said, if you have to do dynamite therapy on me, <laughs> blow this baby out <laughs> right now. So I'm usually very sweet. You know? I'm usually very calm. But, you know, if God is requiring of you to have a 10-pound, 6-ounce baby... You can do it. All the guys are like, oh, no. But something like that. You know, God can make you strong. So thank you, Jordan, for... Uh, you awesome. So I want to give you three choices that lead to a strong spirit. And the first one is practicing the promises of God makes us strong. Ephesians 6, 10, 17. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So this verse tells us how to put on the whole armor of God, but I just want to look at one of the pieces of the armor and that is the sword of the spirit. So um, Jeff, our, our kids pastor, he's a bona fide like 10th degree black belt and he's like a really cool He's taken all these sword lessons. He wouldn't give me the real one because he doesn't trust me. But so this is what they practice with. And I just wanted to show you this sword. You know, we're not messing around like when the devil comes to us with his fear and his lies to us. We have to get serious and say, devil, I am going to cut you up. I'm going to cut you up and I'm going to cut you up with the sword of the spirit. And you know what the sword of the spirit is? That is a rhema word from God. That is, and what that means is that is a specific or a quicken word from the Holy Spirit. The promise from God becomes a sword you can use to say, stay strong. Did you know that the Roman soldiers practice like ours every day with their swords and all of their other weapons so that they would hone their skills? And we have to do the same thing with the word of God. The, the Apostle Paul said, take the sword of the Spirit or the rhema, the specific quickened word of God and tell the devil to go where he needs to go because you've got the powerful rhema of God. The Holy Spirit will put it in your hand. He'll put it in your heart and you can use that. Um, remember when Jesus was on a 40 day fast and he was in the wilderness, that's what he used. He used the rhema word of God. When the devil tempted him with food, he said, if you're the son of God, then turn these stones into bread. When the devil tempted Jesus with all the kingdom of this world, Jesus said, you shall 
Worship the Lord thy God, and him shall you worship only. Then the devil tempted Jesus to prove his deity, and Jesus said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So every time the devil came at him, he used the word of God. He used the rhema word of God. He used the sword of God. So just like Jesus, every single one of you are equipped with the rhema word of God, with the sword of the Spirit. Use it every day.